So Drew is a research agronomist and agroecologist with USDA, um, ARS, and Mandan. Uh, he has his PhD in plant biology from Southern Illinois University uh, and has research interests in biological diversity and ecosystem services in grassland and cropland systems. So um, let's uh, welcome here Drew here to go give us a talk today on what's your long-term evaluation of planting treatment. So here you go, Drew. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about uh, a CRP restoration project in eastern Montana today. Um, and I have a very generic title because when I accepted to speak here today, I had not analyzed any of this data. So CRP stands for the Conservation Reserve Program. Um, and the goal of this program is to give farmers a financial incentive to uh, convert some of their marginal cropland to perennial vegetation um, with the goal of reducing soil erosion, enhancing water quality, and improving wildlife habitat. Um, however, many CRP plantings are unsuccessful. Uh, there's difficulty in establishing um, stable communities of native plants uh, because of things like drought conditions, um, large-scale erosion, and uh, weedy plants. And so if we get these eroded landscapes with weedy plants, uh, that defeats the conservation objectives of this CRP program. Um, so the Farm Service Agency approached, approached some ARS scientists in 2016, and they asked us to do some research in uh, low precipitation areas, um, and how can we better establish CRP land. Um, a couple things we're looking at in this first phase of research um, the effect of the seeding year. Um, and it's known that the conditions of when you seed can have a long lasting effect on your plant communities. Um, so here's an example from tall grass prairie restorations. Um, this older sequence, sequence one. Okay, there it is, sequence one. Oh, no, this one here um, was started in a wet year and sequence two was in a dry year. And you can see that even after a decade, each point is a year, um, these plant communities remained distinct. Um, we also know that seeding, how we seed might have an effect on, us, on our establishment success. Um, so we were looking at two treatments. Uh, green manure. Um, there's been little research on this in CRP restoration specifically, but in croplands, we know this can increase organic matter and suppress weeds. And the other uh, seed treatment approach we're looking at is having alternate grass and forb uh, rows. Again, little research on this. Um, but it's known that high grass density seeding can lead to lower diversity. So hopefully by arranging uh, the planting where we have grass for grass, uh, we can reduce that competition of those forb species and ultimately result in higher diversity plantings. So our research questions. Um, does planted species diversity, um, as measured by the effective number of species, vary among seeding year and seeding treatments? And then if so, do richness and evenness, the two components of diversity differ? And then we also investigated, are there any differences in results depending on the evaluation method Frequency, counting how frequent um, a plant occurs in these subframes um, versus density, counting the number of individuals within a species. Um, so today I'm focusing on these three sites in Montana at Sydney, Freud, and Haver. 
And here, here's Sydney, Freud, and Haver. Um, so our treatments, we had two different seating years, either seated in 2017 or 2018. And we had four seating treatments and they all build on each other. So they increase in complexity from one to four. Seeding treatment one is just a standard seed mix. Treatment two is the standard seed mix plus the green manure, which was made up of pea and barley. And then treatment three is the standard seed mix plus the green manure plus the alternate for grass rows. And then treatment four is an enhanced seed mix with the green manure and the alternating grass for bros. Um, so this is precipitation data from the two seeding years. The blue is the average of both years. Um, the orange is the 2017 seeding year and the gray is the 2018 seeding year. Um, and I wanna focus in on the May precip because that's when the vegetation is first going to be establishing. Um, these were all frost seeded. Um, and you can see that at Haver, it was fairly similar between those two years, um, but at the other two sites, uh, there's greater precip in 2017 compared to 2018. Uh, so this is our standard seed mix. It has four grasses and three forbs. We have blanket flower, purple prairie clover, scarlet glow mallow, western wheatgrass, green needle grass, blue grama, and little blue stem. And then the enhanced seed mix can, includes all of these standard seed mix plus these species here. Wild Bergamot, Canada, Milk Vetch, Slender Wheatgrass, Rocky Mountain Penstemon, Prairie June Grass, Side Oats Grandma, Hairy Golden Aster, Prairie Coneflower, Purple Coneflower, and Switchgrass. So this one has eight grasses and nine forbs in the mix. Um, so our sampling method, we used a frame like this to measure plant composition. Um, from 2018 through 2022. Um, we recorded the frequency and the density of those planted species. And the frequency is just a uh, number of times it was present in one of those 25 squares, whereas density was counting the number of individuals in that entire frame. Um, we didn't measure species composition during that first year of planting. And we had four frames set up diagonally across each plot. And then we aggregated that data to the whole plot level before analysis. And this frame is uh, three quarter meters squared um, and it's five by five subframes. So 25 total. All right, uh, our statistical methods, we evaluated um, diversity using effective number of species which is the exponential version of Shannon's diversity. So I like to think of this as the richness weighted by how uneven the community is. So that was our response. Um, and then we also looked at richness and Pelu's evenness as responses. And then we had fixed effects of seeding treatment, seeding year, and the interaction of those two. Um, and the reason I went with this, this model is that I saw no directional trend um, in diversity with sampling year, so that didn't need to be included as an effect in the model. Um, I used the LME, func LME function in R to do this with a random effect of site and autoregressive order one repeated measures and interpreted marginal p-values. And in the future, uh, we plan to do some multivariate analyses as well. All right, so for the diversity as measured by the effective number of species with the frequency method, um, we saw significant main effects, but no interaction. 
Um, we saw that the enhanced mix with the green manure and the alternate rows, which is treatment four, had higher diversity than all the other seeding treatments. And that the 2017 seeding year had a higher diversity than the 2018 seeding year. And so this is that in uh, figure form. So you can see treatment four, higher diversity than all the other seeding treatments. 2017, higher diversity than seeding in 2018. All right, and then we get the same, um, same interpretation using the density method. Significant main effects where treatment four was had higher diversity than all other seeding treatments, and the 2017 seeding year had higher plant diversity than 2018. So you get some very similar looking figures here. Again, treatment four is higher than all the others, and 2017 higher than 2018. All right, and then richness. Uh, the nice thing here is that is that both the frequency and the density uh, methods will give you the same answer here. Uh, again, we saw significant main effects, so very similar pattern as we saw with total diversity and very similar looking figures. Treatment four is higher than all the other seeding treatments. 2017, um, higher uh, richness than 2018. All right, now we see something a little bit different in the evenness uh, using the frequency method. Uh, here we see a significant interaction. Um, so the 2018 seed year had higher uh, evenness than 2017, but only in seeding treatment two. That's the one with the standard mix and the green manure. And then treatments four and three had higher evenness than treatment two in 2017. And then in 2018, treatment four had higher evenness than treatment one in 2018. Um, so here's that in a figure. You can see three and four in 2017 have higher evenness than treatment two. And then if you look um, within the seeding treatments, there's only a difference in treatment two where the evenness was higher in 2018. And then if you look at that same measurement, but using uh, the density method, there are no significant differences. Um, so we got uh, slightly lower diversity values using that density method compared to the frequency method. It's likely that the grasses were counted uh, more often using that density method, counting the number of individuals. Uh, we saw a higher effect size using that frequency method. So this might be a more sensitive method. Um, so this is good news for me because I don't want to have to count all the individual individuals within every species. Um, and we also had similar conclusions regardless of which method was used. So that gives us greater confidence that those diversity effects that we saw are a real effect. Um, we also saw that richness showed the same pattern as uh, diversity. So that suggests that richness is the stronger driver of diversity rather than evenness. Um, and we saw that that treatment three, the green manure and alternate uh, grass four bros can promote evenness in some seed year conditions. Uh, so this might be a viable option um, if you're doing a restoration in an area where um, it's surrounded by other grassland. Um, but it does seem like the best way to increase diversity of these CRP restorations 
is to seed more species. Um, so this work was funded in part by the Farm Service Agency, um, and they've asked us to uh, keep researching on this topic. So some of our future work, we're going to try to integrate these findings across, um, across all three of these regions. Um, and then in a second phase of funding, we're looking at how weed pressure interacts with soil moisture um, to affect establishment of CRP. And in the third phase of funding, uh, we're trying to answer, um, can we use precipitation forecasting and alternative seeding methods uh, to improve restoration success? Um, and with that, I'll take any questions. Um, I know this is phase three, but do you know what kind of alternative seeding methods you might consider? Yeah, so we're looking at drilling all the seed versus um, broadcasting all the seed versus drilling the grasses and broadcasting the forbs. Mm -hmm.